Hello everyone, I am Mr. Cheebs. Now sometimes I have to scrap or delay videos, so instead of doing whatever else I had planned, today we will be looking at the new depth of field implementation in Eevee. While Eevee's current depth of field isn't all that bad, I mean, it, it does get rather horrendous when you put a shit to its extremes, and performance with it isn't all that ideal. Luckily for us though, all of that is now fixed with a new implementation of depth of field in Eevee from Clement Foucault, or Foucault, or Fasalt. Um, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but uh, you're pretty dope, man. So I'm a good 3D artist, right? And that means I obviously know how to make any render look great. Instantly, I can see that this looks way more performant than the old depth of field implementation. Now with the old implementation, we only had one setting under this EV toolbar, and that was the maximum pixel size. Essentially with this, you could clamp the maximum amount that an object could be blurred. However, with this new implementation, we get that slider still, along with six new settings. Now the first is the sprite threshold, which can be used to clamp down the very bright parts of the image and reduce highlights a little bit. The second is the neighbor rejection value, which can be increased to change the maximum brightness that a section will be cut off. Sliding this up will make the bokeh effect fill up a bit and be rather brighter. Now the third is a denoising slider, which should be relatively self-explanatory if you've been doing this for any amount of time. Here's a comparison at one sample and another one at 64 samples. At higher sample values, this isn't quite as noticeable, but it does have a bit of a difference. Again, like most of the other settings, this does have a bit of an impact on some of the brightness levels in your image. Next, we've got two toggles, the first of which is high quality slight defocus. This samples more pixels within the in-focus areas of the image to give a clearer image. If we zoom in on a comparison render at one sample, we can see this. Now again, this isn't as noticeable the higher you increase the sample count, but it still can be rather useful, so I'd recommend just leaving this on almost all the time. The last two options go hand in hand. Turning on jitter camera will vary up the position of the camera when taking depth of field samples very slightly, so that way the depth of field is represented more accurately and it gives a cleaner result. More accurate doesn't always mean better, especially if you're using lower sample count values, so I'd recommend turning this on and off just to see which one looks better for your specific scene. The overblur option is unlocked when using this, and that will essentially blur these samples a bit so that they appear smoother. The lower you have this, the sharper your bokeh samples and depth of field will be, and the higher you have this, the more clean and smooth it will turn out. So in conclusion, this is a pretty great new feature. As of when I'm recording this video, this is currently in the optional daily builds page, so I will link to that in the description below. Just look for the branch of Blender that has EV, depth of field, or DOF in it. Now I want to thank all of my patrons. We've got Matt, Terry Davis, Don Hopkins, Susan Uncle, Atom Galf, Stephanie Swanee, Justin Oliver, Gehreg Gosselin, and Joep Willemson. I'm pretty sure I pronounced those all right. Thank you guys for helping out this channel. Thank you to everyone who watched this. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content, and have a great day.